Hello and welcome to episode 11 of my Kerbal Space Program NASA series. Uh, we're starting things out with a view out the window of the orbiting Skylab on the night side of Kerbin. And because I had to rebuild the save to get station science updated and working, um, you're going to see these city light textures flip in and out because for some reason I always forget to uh, update those. But station science is working as intended, um, so I finally was able to complete this flight. Um, I've come to the, the uh, decision that my next series is going to be done in 32-bit with texture compression unless I hear just spectacular things about the new 64-bit um, client in 0.25, which came out today. So if you haven't, uh, go download that like five minutes ago. Um, it sounds pretty exciting, especially if you're uh, not a mod user and playing vanilla. We're finishing up our long duration experiment on Skylab, returning the science and the crew back to Kerbin, and then we'll be launching uh, quite a few unmanned probes on this uh, video. I'm keeping it simple, and you can see the textures changed. Uh, this is after I rebuilt it and got everything functioning. So I eventually got it correct, and I keep saying this. I think I've said it once per video, so let's uh, not break tradition. I'll say it again this time. I think I finally got things sorted out. So it should not change much until the end of the series. All right, now in the next video when I inevitably um, have to rebuild something and break the game again, I can live up to tradition. Um, but everything's staying unmanned. I've got a space shuttle built, ready to go, but I decided to stick to unmanned flights so I could fill out a video because I'd really like my first space shuttle flight to be done in one long take. And um, just to demonstrate that I flew to orbit, performed the mission, and brought it back safely um, all in one go without saving and reloading. Just a uh, little verification on my part that I am staying honest. But I'm, I'm not going to develop completely delete, revert, and quick save um, just because 64-bit has been so unstable that repairing from uh, quick saves and other files has been pretty much the only thing that's kept this uh, video series going a couple times. So those are still active, but I'm only using them as emergency um, recovery from just absolutely disastrous uh, crashes. And I designed Skylab um, back actually start talking about the mission at hand. I designed Skylab to be modular so I can pull these uh, station science modules on and off at will so that <clears throat> they can be removed and reinstalled by or replaced with new uh, experiments on further flights. And uh, this is the last flight of the Apollo CSM or Kerpolo as I've been calling it. Um, after this my manned missions are going to be flown on board the uh, space shuttle and we'll get into Venture Star which is functioning. Um, uh, back to what I was saying previously though my space shuttle video is going to be run at uh, 4x time acceleration just because if you want the real nitty-gritty on how I fly and how the shuttle works I've got um, plenty of videos in my shuttle playlist that uh, will keep you satisfied. This is just um, in the series I just want to show how I use it not necessarily how it functions because I've covered that so so thoroughly in the other uh, videos. But yeah, eventually, um, I think I'm going to keep Venture Star in operation until the very end of the series. But I'm also, I am going to introduce um, Orion just because when I start assembling my Constellation mission, it'll be the more efficient way to get crews up and down to it. Um, especially because I'm planning on pretty large crew for that vessel. And, uh, like I said, I'm, ca I'm capable of building um, pretty large and impressive ships in Kerbal Space Program, but I'm trying to keep things real world for this series. I'm, for my .25 series, um, I'm just going to go all out nuts as far as my imagination goes. We're ditching the experiment module so it'll burn up safely in the atmosphere. And as you saw on the map, um, I still had um, remote tech active at this point, but it was just becoming untenable to try and keep that functioning correctly. And I don't think I'll say it again. Um, I'll keep saying it. I do not believe that is an issue with the remote tech mod. I think it's got um, just the way the 64-bit 
client is operating. I think there's just a lot going on there, and it was probably a combination of 64-bit um, and uh, remote tech. So, if because I've been running 32-bit saves since forever on remote tech and never had the slightest issue with them, except for way back in like 0.18, but that was very, very long time ago. And I believe that was still Remote Tech 1. I don't think Remote Tech 2 had even been put out yet. But pretty similar to a Apollo uh, Return. This is the last time until I get into Orion that you're going to have to watch this. Um, I'm probably, unless things go disastrously wrong on a Venture Star or Shuttle Flight after my initial one, I'm probably not going to make everybody suffer through every uh, launch and recovery. Because... They're very fun to play. I love. I'm a huge flight sim fan. I've been playing uh, hardcore flight simulators since I was seven years old, starting with TFX on my dad's old 486. But uh, what I enjoy flying and playing is not necessarily what people enjoy watching. So I'm not going to punish everyone and make them watch every single return and launch. Safe return for the Skylab crew with their bounty of science, which really wasn't a whole lot. Um, I like how Station Science keeps their uh, science yields pretty balanced. And uh, the newest version, um, I really... The intermediate version between what I had and then what I've got now had, like I said before, they had some issues with spamming the contracts list with nothing but Station Science uh, missions. Like... Uh, it was like eight missions for building different uh, stations in various configurations and locations. Now there's about two or three of them in the list, and in fact I'm going to show the contracts list now. Um, I've been debating whether to keep Skylab operational in low carbon orbit because I've got that huge fuel tank on it that hasn't been utilized for anything. It is still full. Um, I put it there because I wanted the challenge of punting that much mass into orbit, and I kind of thought maybe I could use it for refueling. So the debate is now, do I keep Skylab operational, which is, you know, not true to history, but it will give me a station in low carbon orbit where I can do the experiments in LKO, and do I put my ISS in high carbon orbit? The only objection I have with that is I'll be that means I'll be flying a lot of space shuttle and Venture Star returns from HKO, and as I've been experimenting in um, my sandbox save, returning the shuttle and Venture Star from high urban orbit is an exercise in tension. Um, it's you you're coming in a lot faster. You're you have less time to slow down and brake, so you have to nail your reentry perfectly or else um, you'll either overshoot or stall out and miss the runway. And my space shuttle has a glide ratio pretty much in line with the real shuttle. It, it does not fly by any means. Um, it can only modulate its rate of descent. descent. It will climb, but it's burning off uh, velocity so quickly that uh, it's... If you're trying to climb in the space shuttle, you're going to have a bad day. I'll just I'll just put that put that out there. But this is my Viking mission. Um, I decided to uh, try and keep an aero shell around the lander probe, and this is the mission that broke remote tech um, and caused me to um, delete the DLL. Then I had to go mod all the antennas so that they'll still work as at least as uh, data transmitters. I'm going really crazy with uh, Infernal Robotics, so I've got that moving dish, so I just kind of had to ride it out. It's very flimsy, and this is four times time acceleration, um, so it looks worse than it was, but it was still pretty bad. Um, finally got a Duna window set up, and so we're sending this sucker on its flight. Still had remote tech operating at this point, um, but trying to land everything, it was just not, it wasn't going to happen. Starting to get some weird orbit changes. Um, I'm not entirely certain what's going on if I'm not paying attention and things are getting gravity assists and flung out of uh, various systems, or if the game's breaking down around me. I'm tend doing, I'm Tending to incline that stuff's getting uh, unintentional gravity assists, but 
I'm not paying close enough to attention to uh, say for sure. And in this screen, you can see a Eve probe I tried to launch, and that just went terribly wrong. That wasn't worth showing. Yes, I had previously had luck on other saves launching things to different planets out of phase. It took it takes a uh, little bit more uh, delta V, but I thought I could handle it. Uh, that was most assuredly not the case, and so that was a large chunk of money just blown out the window. And this is after separation. Um, I was having so many crashes from remote tech that this was the uh, earliest point I could get back to. And so we've got a nice little re-entry pod for the Viking lander. And of course it comes in on the night side. Um, as you can see from the top left corner without seeing the uh, remote tech flight computer console, remote tech is disabled at this stage. Um, that's just a fact of... I was using the actual Viking orbiter as the <clears throat> signal tr uh, relay for the lander, and I had my three uh, geosynchronous satellites communicating to the um, orbiter, and I even have... Uh, I had signal delay de uh, disabled, so it should... There was... Um, the problem was not so much signal delay and actually physically flying the thing. The problem was um, occasionally the game would glitch out and forget which satellite had line of sight to another and I verified they weren't getting blocked by planets um, and so at that stage things were going so terribly wrong that it became apparent I needed to just abandon remote tech. Bringing the lander down. First time I've used the uh, monopropellant engines which uh, got some pretty insane uh, thrust to them, which was pretty nice. And once again, I'm always get a little tense trying to use parachutes on Duna. Um, this thing could have come down just on parachute descent, but I wanted to just use it as a uh, braking parachute. And so once I started getting paranoid and firing the engines, of course the parachute deploys. Go ahead and center up my landing. I'm trying to keep an eye on the uh, radar alt altimeter so I know when to separate from the chute. And these sensors um, try to do some readings up in the atmosphere while I can. Finally separate the chute. And if it comes down too fast, that bottom science package will get clobbered. Um, I tr learned that on a couple uh, test landings on Kerbin. But that's the main science package. It does have other experiments, but uh, those are kind of the meat and potatoes of the mission. We have a nice soft landing. And at this point, I hadn't modified the antennas yet, so I was trying to uh, deploy everything to make sure it, uh, I could transmit the science. But I had to go in and modify CFGs for all that. So surface sample, all that fun stuff. And then we decide to put the uh, orbiter into a stable orbit before we lose it. And you can see from my contract screen in the top right corner, I forgot to uh, re-accept the Explore Duna contract, so I had to go back to uh, the Space Center and fix everything. Oh no, I had it. Oh, I remember. I corrected that before it came back. Um, before this thing inserted into an orbit, so I didn't get my uh, achieve orbit around Duna science or uh, contract achievement. I was kind of proud of the way I uh, circumvented that. We get this thing in daytime so we can uh, get some solar power to it, start sending our science out. Which took a couple hours at time acceleration to get done, just because it's got two little bitty panels. The batteries are not that huge, and uh, there's a lot of data to send. Plus, kind of nice to see doing it in the daytime. Nighttime sucks. We start achieving uh, contract goals at this point. And it looks to me like Better Atmospheres is, is incorporating the Duna surface dust storms. I'm not entirely 
certain, but it definitely looks to be the case. I think better atmospheres uh, greatly improves Duna. Probably more, to me, even more than Kerbin, just because... Um, I don't know, maybe I just have a fixation on Mars. Kind of hazing out the moon there, or Ike. Nice view of the surroundings. And with being unable to uh, accomplish the enter orbit around Duna science, we decide to uh, put Duna 4 back into operation. Call upon our venerable probe. See if we can enter into a stable orbit around Duna with the last remaining scraps of fuel that it's got on board. Trying to minimize delta V as much as possible, which is kind of a tall order when you're coming from a polar orbit. But we eventually manage it. And are finally able to unlock the very final parts of making a functional space shuttle. My first shuttle is going to have to be solar powered, but that was a quick show off of a uh, custom emblem that my younger sister made for me. I wanted to update my NASA flags as the uh, program goes on, and that would be the NASA Worm logo converted to the Kerbin Space Agency. Big thanks for uh, that little commission she did. So they don't use the worm logo except um, for the uh, NASA Federal Credit Union, actually, which is uh, blue now. But I always thought it was one of their more interesting logos. It's been retired from official spacecraft use, but it was uh, a primary emblem from the mid-70s to the early 90s. And this being the Voyager 1 type years, I decided to uh, throw that on. And this is not a Voyager 1 flight, this is actually a Moho probe, um, because I had the uh, window come, it for, come up for it earlier. I have sent a probe out to Jewel, and I'm going to very quickly touch on that flight, because it's got a three-year uh, period before it arrives. I'm going to run the launch and time acceleration on the next video, and then we're going to get straight into, excuse me, uh, shuttle flights. I'm... I don't know when I want to deploy the Cacti Telescope. Um, the science uh, yield on it is fairly high, so... Just gonna have to figure that one out as I go along. But yes, a lot of uh, messing with orbital parameters to try and get to MOHO, which is... This is the first time I've actually ever visited MOHO. Um, this flight in itself, and I'm starting to understand why. It's kind of a hard target to hit, and uh, well, things did not go entirely as planned, but I will leave that for a future episode. Until then, uh, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.